the Fed's biggest interest rate gut call yet is what is being anticipated. We will, of course, know in a few hours, few minutes from now. But really, the big question that everyone has been asking is, will it be a 25 basis point rate cut this time or a 50 basis point rate cut? And will the Fed then be aggressive or not? Well, to decode this, I'm joined by Mithali Nikor, Senior Economist, Sanchita Mukherjee, Senior Business Economist, and Nasser Saleem, Market Expert at Large. Thanks very much for your time, all of you. First, Mithali, to you. Will it be a 25 basis point rate cut or a 50 basis point rate cut? That really is the big question and the big debate this time. So, hi, Shapshi, and, uh, you know, a big hi to Sanjita and Nasir also. I think, uh, I don't know if they will agree with me or if people generally agree with me, but I'm sticking to uh, the prediction of 25 basis points uh, rate cut simply because of the cues that the Fed has been giving. So, if you notice all of the statements that they've been issuing, firstly, I think they've done a fantastic job in the number of statements they've issued about this particular meeting. And they are almost like preparing the market very, very well. And global markets are being prepared through their multiple statements where they're saying we are going to cut rates. So that itself is something which is, you know, which is which is helping uh, markets adjust their expectations and really plan for this rate cut. But I do expect it will come in two phases because they are going to have their next meeting on 7th, 8th November. And in that meeting also, they could actually announce, you know, post the elections, another rate cut now each time they do a smaller rate cut it helps the markets adjust to it so it doesn't cause a massive amount of uncertainty in the market so i'm still going with the 25 basis points prediction only because of the way the fed's communication has been coming uh throughout this period right now sanjita globally policymakers are debating over this your first thoughts 25 basis point rate cut or 50 basis points well, there are many facets to this, Sakshi, and thank you so much for ha having me on this show. It's always a pleasure to be here. Um, I would say let's decipher this, let's deep dive into this topic, because uh, this is a very momentous announcement, which is expected after almost four years. The last rate cut was in March 2020, right? Mm -hmm. So since then, Federal Reserve has only increased rates, and right now the Federal Reserve rate in U.S. economy uh, is high. There is also a lot of talk about recessionary pressures that the U.S. economy is going through. Uh, whilst you, uh, the Federal Reserve has been very, very uh, strict in monitoring inflation, now inflation seems to be coming down towards its targeted 2%. However, having said that, there are other data points which are, you know, the higher cost of housing remains, um, you know, airline tickets inflation still remains. So these are finer points. Also, the U.S. Federal Reserve is very, very cognizant now of the fact that they cannot only be targeting inflation. They're also worried about the uh, numbers which are coming up in the labor market in terms of the unemployment. They really don't want their economy uh, to slow down to a much greater extent than what it has already. So that's why this whole debate is going through in terms of whether it's a 25 bips cut or whether it will be a 50 bips cut. Now, if you were to ask me, I would agree with what Mitali has just voiced. I think a more calibrated, nuanced 25 bips is what the Federal Reserve can consider, given the fact that the U.S. economic strength still remains to be one of the points uh, being spoken about. The U.S. consumer sentiment remains to be buoyant, and there are lower commodity prices, uh, which are there. So a uh, more calibrated, now it all remains in the next 14 hours, we'll get to know uh, in terms of how it will unfold in terms of whether it will be a calibrated 25 bips point or as some economists do argue that it might be a very clear cut deeper and early rate cut of 50 bips because they might say that you know the u.s economy slowdown is far higher than what we are envisage uh, than what we can envisage at this point in time so they would need a, a much sharper 50 bips point now how is this debate relevant to the rest of the world in terms of why are we discussing with so much antip anticipation whether it's a 25 bips cut or a 50 bips cut it's because most central banks post the federal reserve announcement uh, would look at their own policy decisions and follow suit if need be uh, in india specifically i think we are poised very well the rbi has clearly said that our 
rates will be contingent to inflation numbers domestically. You know, we are in, at a point in time in which inflation is very much under control. We've had a good monsoon, but food prices is something which is very, very cautionary for our central bank, our RBI. And I think it's a very good note to follow right now. If you were to see the capital markets, we are at a point of strength. The dollar inflow has been coming in in a tremendous manner. So uh, this Federal Reserve rate cut also impacts currencies, which we might uh, need to understand because uh, if currency, if the dollar weakens and the US uh, and the INR appreciates vis-a-vis -vis the dollar, then it will not be that great uh, from the point of view of our trade deficit, say with China or our import-export balances. You know, RBI has been very, very cognizant in keeping INR, our currency, extremely stable vis-a-vis -vis all other currencies of the world. So that's one facet. So I think we're uh, at a point of strength domestically. Uh, let's see what happens now in the next couple of hours. All right, all right. So Nasir, how, what would you say? 25 basis point rate cut or 50 basis point rate cut? That really has been the big question this time. And of course, a historic and a milestone interest rate call you know, that we have seen in times uh, before, before us. So your first thoughts. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, uh, you know, all three of you. Thank you very much, Sakshi, for having me over. I think, you know, uh, everything has been pretty much been covered by between Mithali and uh, Sanchita. But, you know, what all that I might like to say clearly is that, um, you know, experts by and large believe that this could be, uh, you know, uh, a start of a lot of rate cuts to happen. I think uh, if you, if I go back to you, to the Fed chairman's uh, speech, uh, which was in, in Jackson Hole. Um, uh, and he stressed about the Fed's readiness to cut rates to support two very important things. One is the job market uh, and achieve something which, you know, we've been talking about all throughout, which is soft lending, right, for the U.S. economy. I think today, um, you know, given the fact that right from the beginning of this financial calendar, rather, uh, there were discussions of soft versus hard lending as far as the U.S. is concerned. I think today uh, a 25 basis rate cut has already been priced in. Uh, you know, uh, the tone and the reasoning behind this decision will set the stage for global uh, market sentiments, you know, including India's. And you know, and analysts have broadly priced in a 25 basis rate cut, and I'm not going any contrary to that view. Uh, you know, we also feel, and this is unanimously, I mean, across all experts have said this that anything beyond 25 basis rate cut at the moment today, Sakshi, may also send a negative a signal regarding economic health, right? So I think it's it's a very tough decision. Uh, the Fed's been, you know, kind of been trying to balance this out between, you know, uh, the pressure that they've been facing on as far as the U.S. economic indicators are concerned. Uh, we are looking at a soft landing uh, is what is expected. And therefore, I, I think I would also go ahead with a 25 basis rate cut. Uh, broadly with, right. with the large. All of you seem to agree there, a soft landing at large. But Mithali, to those watching and saying that, look, how does a Fed rate cut impact me, really? To answer that, you know, how will a 25 basis point rate cut impact viewers and all those sitting at home and watching, in particular in the US, as well as those, of course, uh, you know, tracking this in global markets, as uh, Sanchita was saying. So really for all those saying, okay, what does this really mean for me? What will a 25 basis point rate cut indicate? And what will then if at all a 50 basis point rate cut happen, indicate. So I think, Sachi, let's take a step back and look yeah. at where the U.S. has come in, in its macroeconomic journey. So in, I'm not going to go into the COVID years, but if we look at just the data from June 2022, at that time, inflation in the U.S. was at an all-time high of 9.1%. That was the time when everybody said, you know, they need deep rate increases. And the Fed, you know, took really a strong stance against inflation, worked very hard along with banks, along with several of, you know, the large sort of banks in the U.S. to make sure that those, you know, rate increases were passed on almost fully by the large banks. And now today they are standing at an inflation rate of about 2.5% which is close to their target of 2%. So in this you know, journey over the last two, two and a half years, what the US consumer has experienced, you know, like what a person like you and me in the US would have experienced, is definitely a relief to some extent on some areas, for example, you know, like consumer boards, et cetera. 
but the area which is the biggest problem in the us today and which is being highlighted by both the candidates in the election campaign also is around housing house prices and rents both of these are being very sticky so these are actually the two major components of inflation which are still quite high and they are still not coming down they are still quite sticky and the entire campaign that kamla harris for example is doing is focused so clearly on affordable housing now let's contrast the affordable housing policies of the us with say some of the emerging economies and i feel that this needs to be done more you know in the international discourse we never talk about lessons that a country like the us can learn from from india but you look at the way we have done on affordable housing under the prime minister's uh, you know affordable housing schemes both for urban and rural areas the availability of affordable housing in india has quadrupled in the last you know 10 years why is the us not embarking on that kind of a program it doesn't have to be publicly funded in their economy but it can be subsidized so you know that is one way to also reduce inflation the inflation is not only reduced by monetary measures but also by fiscal measures and they do have you know some amount of fiscal space to you know invest in social welfare which at this point in time we are not seeing to that extent even today but mm-hmm. coming back to the point that you know where does this rate rate reduction then impact the first impact will be felt in mortgages because the rate of your mortgage if it is not indexed sorry if it is indexed to inflation it will come down if it is not mm-hmm. indexed if it's a fixed rate obviously you will not feel it but mm-hmm. if it is indexed to inflation you will benefit from that that's the first thing and the second thing is that it's hopefully going to have an impact even in logistics cost so say you are transporting something from point a to b the inflationary rates will bring down fuel prices and therefore you know the logistics cost and overall then prices of goods and services in a you know cyclical manner so we do think that you know this will help to spur demand also it becomes easier for firms to raise financing that's the third benefit so you know your small and medium enterprises can get loans at a cheaper rate and that also helps to create jobs and to create the next cycle of investment so overall it will spur that investment activity in the market but i do think that you know the us is it's i mean that point 0.5 will obviously mean a faster spur of that activity whereas the point 0.25 will be okay now you're starting to build that in your mortgages are reducing those effects will be you know more apparent right so sanjana do you agree really a point 0.5 will mean a faster spur of activity and a point uh, you know 0.25 will then sort of mean just a slower and just a start at large so do you agree with that and also what will that mean for uh, india and for the rest of the economies tracking this big announcement at large yes i agree with both mitali and nasir uh, in fact a couple of points here i'd start off with this quote from jamie dimon as the uh, jp morgan uh, ceo last night he said this federal reserve rate cut which is a pivot uh is of no consequence at all <laughs> so that was his point of view but having said that why uh he said it is because yes it's more or less expected now that the inflationary exactly. trends are coming into focus that the in the us economy that the inflation is more or less in target um uh, given the every other factor in fact if you were to look at the us retail sales i was seeing for august and july that's coming in very strong numbers so that bit of inflation is still very patchy so in my opinion yeah i don't think it will be a very drastic 50 bips i agree with nasir because if it's a very deep uh, cut uh, of a 50 bips so early in the day it might actually uh, communicate uh, that the economy is in a bigger trouble than we what we already know and that everything is not all right and that's not a communication that federal reserve would like to make i think in fact what we should all watch out investors across the globe uh is the statement it's very very important uh to understand what kind of a guidance they give in fact if they're starting on this journey for the rate cut and there'll be couple more rate cuts this year in october november december plus it's an election year uh the results of the election all of that i think it's very important to understand what how the federal reserve would word their communication in terms of how they're heading towards this economy which has inflation more or less under check 
but certain pockets of the economy still high what mitali mentioned you know the housing cost the price of the mortgages uh, stickiness in the retail sales uh, mm-hmm. so i think the guidance will be very very important domestically be rest assured this is actually in jamie diamond's word not that much of a consequence to us because right. i think our done a fabulous job of managing our currency and it will all depend upon our food price inflation because that affects the lowest common denominator in our economy uh rest of the other economic indicators we are doing very well in terms of manufacturing in terms of all other sectors gdp growth all of that so i think rbi will follow suit at some point in time if they get comfort that our food inflation is under check oil prices are under check and uh, we are coming from a strength of macroeconomic indicators only then it will impact us otherwise of not much in, uh, consequence with respect to the markets also i feel markets are uh, the risk of sentiment is still not there we are poised uh, at a good valuation right now and i think we can take this event in our stride all right nasir how would you think markets will then react to a 25 basis point rate cut or a 50 basis point rate cut and really at large you know there has been so much debate among policy makers about uh, fed's big interest rate call but how do you think markets will perceive this move uh, that's really crucial to know of course uh, you know there are talks about inflation being on track in the us but of course uh, unemployment concerns remain so really your thoughts and of course is the fed late then to the rate cut party because we have seen central banks globally take that move so is the fed late then to this party Uh, you know sachi uh, very quickly i'll just cover these three broad points i think in continuation to what both my fellow panelists have said and i could absolutely i mean i fully agree with them uh see you know clearly i've been saying this we've been all saying this that the fed needs to strike a right balance between its dual mandate of inflation and unemployment right and it doesn't need to sound very desperate to spur the economy in the face of the anticipated slowdown if at all uh on the other hand you know there's a lot of pressure if, you, if you've been reading the news uh out of the us uh um, you know on speculation which was fueled by a recent letter from the three democratic senators uh, urging powell to aggressively slash the central bank's benchmark interest rate uh up to 75 basis points now their letter is a very harsh strong letter to say that you know you need to do a 75 basis rate cut this week to save the us economy from recession so i think look uh, if the fed is too cautious in cutting rates it would needlessly risk their own economy heading towards a recession you know and 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 therefore i think this entire uh balance is something which they will continue to do and more importantly in our opinion they will go with majority view which is of 25 basis which will entail two very important things number one there's something called cost of capital which eventually is the barometer the single barometer i think today uh as uh, sanjay also has been clearly saying this about foreign i mean about foreign exchange and currency fluctuations i think one of the major reasons why emerging economies currencies and developed economy currencies the, the differential always remains in addition to current account deficit and you know and fiscal consolidation road map is on account of interest rates and i think that interest rate is the main denominator on the reason why you know there is always an arbitrage between a stronger currency of a developed economy vis-a-vis an emerging economy when cost of capital comes down it has its own impact on currency uh we expect a uh, episodic uh knee jerk reaction to the effect that there could be uh, you know this is a classic keynesian economics at play uh when you want to ensure that you want to remove money out of the system you play around with interest rates now we want to get down you know with the two uh, core uh, objectives of the fed we are looking at 25 basis rate cut that will ensure because the markets have already priced in that rate cut right there is not much that you can uh, expect beyond this entire halo impact on account of rate cut so if a rate cut happens cost of capital comes down mortgage all of a sudden starts to look a little more attractive that will spur consumption consumption will spur demand demand will you know uh inordinately uh, ensure that production starts picking up so look the entire cycle starts to get revived i think what is the good news is um uh, for our market since you've asked that question uh uh sachi is that if you see fi participation today stands at 31000 crores right it's already factored in uh, if you look at the latest data it's 31000 crores as against dii dii has been kind of a little slow 
Uh, we have a lot of money which is sitting on the sidelines as far as capital markets are concerned to be deployed. Uh, we feel that with this rate cut, 25 basis rate cut, nothing substantial will move as far as India is concerned. I think the bigger question as far as India is concerned is earnings and growth of individual companies which need to play out. If that doesn't happen, liquidity can't continue to drive these markets up. So I completely agree when uh, you know my colleague Sanchita is using uh, you know uh, the quote, which is that it's not going to have any major impact. Yes, uh, it will play its positive, as I said to you, on currency uh, and flows which may continue to come in uh, on account of FI participation in the last few weeks. That may continue, uh, but obviously a step towards lower cost of capital plays its own impact. So today, some of the sectors that we're looking at as far as domestically are concerned is the entire consumption space, which is looking attractive. There's going to be a potentially good earnings upgrade, which can be expected. There's going to be catch up. There's also some rural demand pickup, which we're witnessing on account of great monsoons that have happened. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the best monsoons in the last few quarters, last few years. I think all of that uh, is also going to ensure that our consumption as far as India is concerned, which was anywhere in a very stronger foot, uh, may see a J curve impact in certain other sectors, which could be fueled by a higher and a stronger participation by the members of the public on account of a rate cut because of lower cost of capital. That's broadly uh, the three points. All right. Thank you so much, all of you, for sharing your thoughts. And of course, the Fed in focus for now. We will continue to track global markets and economies at large.